Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we are going to be looking at intensity and its dependence on the amplitude. So far we've studied that intensity is equal to the amount of power divided by cross-sectional area and just remind ourselves the units of intensity, I'm just going to write those in brackets, are watts per meter squared and this is because power is measured in watts and area is measured in meters squared. Now let's see how does the intensity of a wave depend on its amplitude. Well let's have a look at two waves over here. The amplitude of one of the waves is clearly double the amplitude of the other. We can see that this orange wave has twice the amplitude compared to the yellow wave. Now, how does the intensity depend on the amplitude? Let's have a look at our second formula for intensity. It turns out that intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared of a wave. Now, Notice that unfortunately the symbol for area is exactly the same as the symbol for amplitude and it will be really really important not to confuse the two. So in the equation above, I'm just going to underline this because this is really important and label it, A stands for area like so and a in the second equation that intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared this a here stands for amplitude looking back at the intensity in our diagram over here on the right we can see that one of the waves, the orange wave, has twice the amplitude. Now, how does its intensity differ compared to this wave over here? Well, if it has double the amplitude and because intensity is proportional to the amplitude square, squared, the amplitude will no longer be just A, it will be 2A. So, intensity will be proportional to 2a squared. This means that we will be getting a factor of 4 for the amplitude of the orange wave, which would mean that the intensity of this wave with the larger amplitude will actually be proportional to 4a squared, where a is the original amplitude of the yellow wave. Now let's see whether we can apply our knowledge to some problems. Before we look at the problems, I will just show you one final trick, and uh, this stems from GCSE Maths. Anytime we have a quantity which is proportional to another quantity, for instance, intensity being proportional to the amplitude squared, we can always introduce a constant of proportionality. So this means that we could rewrite the formula that intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared simply as i is equal to k a squared where k is a constant. Now let's have a look at those problems. Okay guys, so I have three problems for you guys to attempt. And this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video, hit the like button, have a read through those questions and smash them. So let's have a look at the solution of the first question. A wave has an intensity of 100 watts per meter squared and an amplitude of 10 centimeters. The amplitude then doubles. What is the new intensity? Well, if you remember, what we mentioned in the previous part of the video is that intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared. So this means that if the amplitude doubles, like so, we will actually get a factor of 4. And this is because the square will also be acting on this factor of 2, like so. So that means the new intensity 
um, will be proportional to 4a squared. So they, they will differ by a factor of 4. So this means that automatically almost we can write down that the new intensity will be, let's call it I2 for instance, will be equal to 400 watts per meter squared. And just to be absolutely certain I'm going to get all the marks, I'm just going to make a little note over here and to just say that the new intensity or just the intensity quadruples. Now let's have a look at question two. The best way to tackle questions two and three is by calculating the constant of proportionality. Some of you guys will be able to do questions two and three just simply thinking about proportionality. However, I'm going to do this the uh, slightly longer but more secure way in a way. Okay, so let's get started. A wave has an intensity of 100 watts per square meter and an amplitude of 10 centimeters. Remember, intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared, which means that there is a constant of proportionality, which I'm just going to go call k. We can find our constant simply by rearranging for it. So our constant k will be equal to our intensity divided by the amplitude squared and when our intensity is 100 our amplitude is 10 centimeters squared so this will be 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 2 don't forget that centi stands for 10 to the power of minus 2 and this whole expression will be squared we can find k simply by rearranging for it so k will be equal to the intensity, the original intensity, divided by the original amplitude squared. So when our intensity is 100, our amplitude is 10 centimeters. So this will be 100 divided by 10 times 10 to the power of minus 2 squared like so. Don't forget to add in the factor of 10 to the power of minus 2. Remember, centi stands for 10 to the power of minus 2. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, we're going to get quite a large number. Uh, k will be equal to 10,000. We can use this value of a constant to find the new intensity. So let's do that. Let's call the new intensity i Two, and this will be equal to the same constant k times the new amplitude, which I'm going to call a2. We'll also need to square that. The final intensity, i2, will then be equal to k, which is 10,000, like so, times the new amplitude, which has now decreased to 3 centimeters. So this will be 10,000 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Then all of this is squared. Giving us 9 watts per square meter for the final intensity. Okay, well, question 2 is solved. Now let's have a look at the final question for us, which is question three. Question three, we have exactly the same wave which has an intensity of 100 watts per meter squared and an amplitude of 10 centimeters. So that means that it is going to have exactly the same constant value which is 10,000. So this means that we can directly use the value for the constant to find the new amplitude. Just for the sake of completeness, uh, I'm just going to write this down over here. So I will be equal to k a squared, which means that our constant k will be equal to 100 divided by 10 times 10 to the power of minus 2, all of this squared, which is equal to 10,000. 
Now, in this case, it's the intensity that is decreasing and when you keep looking for the new amplitude. So I'm just going to write down that our new intensity I2 will be equal to K multiplied by A2 squared. Now I need to rearrange for the new amplitude, which I've called A2, because we are looking for it. So let's do this. A2 squared will be equal to I2 divided by K. And I'm going to square root this to find the new amplitude, which will give me that um, the new amplitude will be equal to the square root of I2 divided by K. Let's put in some numbers into this equation and we're going to get that the new amplitude will be equal to the square root of 40, which is our final intensity, like so, divided by the constant, which is 10,000, which is approximately equal to 0.06 meters, which is equal to six centimeters, which is our new amplitude. Okay, folks, so hopefully that video was useful. If there are any questions about uh, amplitudes and intensity, please drop a comment. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.